welcome you. and thank you for spending some of your time with us. My name is Tina Rosenquist and this is Knowledge for Wellness. And this show is to better inform you because when you know more, you're empowered to make a better decision for yourself and your loved ones for a better quality of life. And knowledge is power. And today's topic is on osteoporosis alternative. And bringing us this great information is Dr. Daryl Cooper from Hudson, Wisconsin. Now, questions we will be asking are, how did science discover that osteoporosis is caused by inflammation? And is American's bone health getting worse? And what is normal bone development? Welcome, Dr. Daryl Cooper. Thank you. It's good to be here. I'm so delighted you could come on Knowledge for Wellness and your passion about this is going to show through using the media as well. I hope so. Yes. It is your first time on Knowledge for Wellness, so of course we want you to tell our viewers about yourself and your love and your passion and why you decided to open up the Hudson Spine. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, I've been a chiropractor for more than 30 years. Okay. One of my passions was osteoporosis. After all, chiropractors are bone doctors. We yes. should be bone specialists. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, what I did was discover in about 2004, through the science of osteoimmunology, mm -hmm. it's a subset of immunology, is that osteoporosis was actually an inflammatory condition. Okay. That really caught my interest. Mm -hmm. Because up until that point, we were very hit and miss on being able to help people with osteoporosis and reverse this, the effects of osteoporosis. Yes. So once we understood that it was actually inflammation, it was an upregulation of a certain type of a cytokine, an immune cell called rank L. And with this, with, with this rank L cytokine being upregulated, mm -hmm. it begins a cascade of inflammatory processes in the body that causes the bones to be resorbed abnormally high. In other words, we start losing bone way too fast. Right. At that point, we knew that osteoporosis was not a calcium deficiency problem. Oh, okay, that's But new. actually a immune system related problem and an inflammatory condition. Okay, so science is backing this information as well. And Absolutely. it's new to the public because we've always been told it's all bone and that we should drink milk. Right. Yeah, so that's quite a new awakening. That's right. In fact, uh, the uh, anthropological studies have shown us without a doubt that the countries that have the highest dairy consumption mm -hmm. actually have the highest bone loss. Okay. And what happens is that the dairy consumption will con uh, cause an inflammatory condition. It'll upregulate the acidic balance of the body mm -hmm. and stimulate part of this inflammatory process, setting off this cascade. Okay. So coming from Wisconsin, that's <laughs> not actually a popular thing to say. No. But it is the truth. Mm -hmm. And so there are other things that do stimulate osteoporosis that I think we'll talk about later, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in your opinion, do you think that American bone density is getting worse then? Unfortunately, it is. Okay. I, I've done thousands of bone studies in my career now. Okay. And we do a mobile bone density testing technique where we use an ultrasound device. It's manufactured by the same company that does the DEXA scans. DEXA scans are computerized x-rays of the hip and the spine, and mm -hmm. they are the gold standard for identifying bone loss. Yes. But we use the scanning device that's also manufactured by this, com these, this same company. And uh, what we're finding is that younger and younger people today are developing osteoporosis. It's not unusual to find somebody in their 30s today that have bone density of a typical 70 or 80 year old. Okay. And uh, that's uh, just a sign of our times that this inflammatory condition is actually affecting our lives at an earlier and earlier point. Okay. In fact, every other woman in the United States will develop a fracture due to osteoporosis in her lifetime. Oh, that's not good. And out, out of those that develop a hip fracture, about 20% will die in less than a year due to complications of it. Mm -hmm. In fact, we actually have more women dying today from complications due to osteoporosis than die from breast cancer. Oh, wow. It's just not getting the headlines that breast cancer is uh -huh. getting. 
Okay, and that's one of the older women's fear is actually falling and breaking a hip. That's right. Yeah. But I want to talk a little bit about uh, what normal bone density would be then also <clears throat> along with knowing that we have this to actually try to prevent, and we'll talk about that as well. Right, so, so understanding norm, normal bone development is mm -hmm. very important in understanding osteoporosis. Okay. Now bone is a living tissue. Mm -hmm. Just like our skin sloughs off and new skin comes up, sure. old bone tissue is sloughing off and mm -hmm. new bone tissue is being developed. Right. It's a very healthy thing for our body to actually go through. Mm -hmm. In fact, you can only imagine what our skin would look like if we didn't have old skin dying off and new skin coming up. Right. Our bones would have a similar problem. They would just get older and more brittle because they don't have new bone coming in and creating new life to the structure. Mm -hmm. So constantly the body is developing small little micro fractures in our bone and our uh, bone cells actually identify where those micro fractures are. Sure. There is a typical cell called os uh, an osteoclast. Okay. These go in and identify these micro fractures. They're like little Pac-Men that go in and chew up and excavate out All old right. bone. Okay. They then send a signal to their partners called osteoblasts okay. to come in and lay down new bone. And then there's a resting phase mm -hmm. and then the process starts over again. So right now okay. about two to five percent of your bone is being remodeled. Mm -hmm. Some areas are being remodeled faster than others. Mm -hmm. The areas that we have bone being remodeled fastest happen to be in our hip and our spine. Okay. And that's why we develop problems there first oh. with osteoporosis. So the body can actually heal within itself when it recreates the bone. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, so. it's an important process because mm -hmm. as the body is excavating, as these osteoclasts are excavating this old bone out, mm -hmm. those uh, electrolytes, those minerals go back into circulation to actually allow our body to function more efficiently, sure. to allow our heart to have proper electronic beating and our brain to have proper electrical function. Okay. So it's a critical process to maintain normal electrolyte balance in this rejuvenation of our bone. Mm -hmm. Okay, well of course we all want to know how to prevent this because we don't want it to happen to us. Right. And is there any precautions that we can do? Well, in order to identify why somebody is having osteoporosis, we need to look at why they may have inflammation. Mm -hmm. When we talk about inflammation, we're talking about the immune system. Right. And so the first place that we go to identify where is the dysregulation occurring within the immune system would be where the majority of our immune system is located. Okay. That happens to be in the lining of our intestines. Okay. Eighty wow. percent of our immune system is actually located right there. Okay. So when that begins to be dysregulated for a variety of reasons, bad food choices, mm -hmm. maybe gluten sensitivity, oh, yes. dairy sensitivity, mm -hmm. things like that, drinking too much soda pop, too much sugar, mm -hmm. that immune system in the lining of the intestine becomes dysregulated. Okay. It can become damaged. These are called microvilli. Okay. And right underneath that lining of the intestine, these microvilli, lie the secretory uh, immunoglobulins that are manufactured that pretty much control the function of our immune system throughout our body. Okay. When that damage occurs, these inflammatory cytokines can become uh, systemic. Okay. They can then go around to other areas of the body and wreak havoc. Okay. And that's how our immune system initially, in most cases, becomes dysregulated. Now you talk about the digestive system and how important is that with the actual uh, gut immune brain axis? Uh, that's a great question and okay. the reason is that these uh, systems are all intertwined. Okay. The gut is where the most of the immune system is located. Mm -hmm. When these inflammatory cytokines become systemic, it can go up to the blood-brain barrier where these microglia cells are located. The blood-brain barrier is there to keep the rest of this part of the body away from this very pristine area of our body, the brain. Okay. When these inflammatory cytokines dysregulate the gut, it begins to dysregulate and compromise the blood-brain barrier, 
these inflammatory cytokines then can cross the blood-brain barrier and cause disconnection patterns in the brain which can cause balance disorders. Okay. And of course we know that Alzheimer's is an inflammatory disease also mm -hmm. and it can begin to cause problems in that area too. Okay. Now, you talked about being gluten intolerant and dairy, mm -hmm. things like that. And mm -hmm. so, how does that actually um, do a sensitivity to your actual health? Right. Yeah. So, basically, let's just talk about gluten because okay. it's an easy example yeah, for us to understand. More and more about we're, we're hearing a lot yes. more, and we're going to be hearing a lot more in the future. Okay. Because the science is beginning to catch up and explain to us why this actually happens to okay. us. So gluten is kind of a gluey substance. Yes. And it is a protein. Mm -hmm. And we have a difficult time digesting this protein called gluten, or what would be more accurately called gliadin, but everybody calls it gluten, so okay. we'll call it gluten. Yes. So this partially digested protein doesn't look like a food to our system. Oh. It actually looks like a foreign object just as if it were a bad bacteria or a parasite or mm -hmm. some other foreign object that would get down into the intestinal tract. Okay. In other words, the immune system's main job is to create a defense mechanism to protect us, right? Mm -hmm. And so our immune system is incredibly intelligent. Yes. And it can actually identify these protein structures that would normally be food mm -hmm. if they were broken down into individual amino acids. Okay. But you see, because we have such a hard time breaking them down, mm -hmm. they are partial proteins and they look like a foreign object to our immune system. Well, our immune system is incredibly intelligent. Yes. And it can actually memorize these protein structures and then it attacks it Mm -hmm. gets rid of it so it doesn't offend the system, and then it'll go out into circulation. And if it begins to identify other tissues of the body uh -huh. that have the same molecular or protein structure, mm -hmm. it then begins to attack that tissue. For example, let's say these cytokines identify this gluten sensitivity mm -hmm. in the amino acid structure that it is. Let's just say 10 amino acid structure. Okay. It identifies exactly the, the uh, ranking and, and type of amino acids those are. It then goes around to other areas of the body. Let's just say it lands on the knuckle of the joint. It says, look it, you are the same type of foreign object that I just identified up in that gut. Oh. I think I'm gonna attack you too. Diagnosis, uh -huh. rheumatoid arthritis. Oh. What if it goes into the tissue of the th uh, thyroid area? Mm -hmm. Identifies that as a foreign object. Diagnosis, Hashimoto's hypothyroid. You see that it can go on throughout the body with all these autoimmune conditions. And it is likely that this is where our autoimmune conditions are beginning. Oh. That is in the gut first, mm -hmm. confusing the immune system causing this inflammatory cascade and this tissue destruction. Okay. Well, you talk about inflammation. Is there any other triggers uh, that actually inflame the body as yes. well? Yes. Yeah, there, there are absolutely some other triggers. Okay. <clears throat> some would be adrenal stress okay. and hormone imbalance. The yes. adrenals get stressed out for a variety of reasons, mm -hmm. typically chemical, physical and emotional stress. Yes. Of course, we all have those. Mm -hmm. Chemical stress would be uh, proteins that we don't digest, uh, insecticides or pesticides or environmental toxins, yes. bad bacteria, parasites, that type of thing in the lining of the gut. Mm -hmm. Of course, physical stress would also cause stress on the adrenal glands mm -hmm. and emotional stress. Yes. Everybody has some emotional stress, some more than others. Mm -hmm. It's important to downregulate any of these stress patterns in order to take stress off the adrenals. Okay. Because the adrenals will actually put out a steroidal hormone called cortisol. And cortisol is like poison to the lining of the gut oh. and damages the secretory IgA production of the immune barrier. Mm -hmm. It is also like poison to the brain. Once it crosses the blood-brain barrier, gets into the insular cortex of the brain, and begins to cause problems of cognitive disorders, memory impairment, etc. Okay. Now we know a little bit about adrenal function being a fight or flight. That's right. As well. And so when your body is stressed in the way that you handle stress is also very important. 
it, it is you know. very important. In other words, we want to get away from that sympathetic overdrive, which is the fight or flight, mm -hmm. and kind of back into the parasympathetic system, which is more rest and digest. Sure. And that would be a really good way to maybe working with you in the sense of going and relieving some of the pain that they have, working with the body, and even getting an actual adjustment as well. Right. Yeah. So those are areas that we work in. Mm -hmm. uh, we especially go in to identify where the inflammatory mechanisms are taking place. Okay. And we now have some extremely valuable scientific techniques to actually identify how the mucosal barrier is being damaged. Okay, so we, that's basically the primary cause of some of the inflammation then? That is the primary cause. Okay. Is, and so we can actually measure the immunoglobulins that are being damaged within the mucosal barrier itself. We can determine whether the tight junctions that actually hold the microvilli of our intestinal tract together mm -hmm. are being damaged. Okay. We can tell whether the damage has gotten down into the muscle okay. of the intestine. We can tell whether the damage is actually being caused by gram-negative bacteria down there. Okay. It's wonderful science that's being developed today and it's continuing to leapfrog day after day and month after month and we're getting some incredible information. So it's one thing to go in and identify the cause. Right. Then it's another thing to go in and actually heal the mucosal barrier mm -hmm. and then it's important to retest to make sure you healed what you started off to heal. Okay, and tell me a little bit about the test to actually go through for this. Yeah, we yeah. Uh, have phlebotomy services at Hudson Hospital okay. where people can go get their blood drawn. Okay. And that is then sent out to a lab in Phoenix, Arizona called mm -hmm. Cyrix Laboratory. Okay, so they specifically look for this? They specifically look for this. This mm -hmm. is not only a uh, laboratory, but it's a research facility okay. inter internationally recognized mm -hmm. uh, through the immunology and neuroimmunology community. Okay. And so it's a very well respected and uh, a highly scientific and technical organization. They're providing the latest and the greatest in immunology for us. Oh, nice. So they actually come to you and they actually just have their blood drawn? Right. And then you send it out and... That's sent out mm -hmm. through Hudson Hospital and mm -hmm. then uh, we get the results back. Sure. We then consult with the patient and here's where you're at. Yes. Here's the plan to reverse this process. Wow. And how long would that, you would you say that that would take if someone our, actually had the diagnosis and then came to you? Right. Our, in order to heal the mucosal barrier of the mm -hmm. intestines, it's about a six-month project. Okay. And so first we need to remove the offenders, mm -hmm. uh, proteins that are not being digested. They, if you're gluten sensitive, yes. you have to get rid of gluten. Mm -hmm. and we do the testing for that. Okay. If you're dairy sensitive, you have to get rid of dairy. Okay. Of course, you got to get rid of the junk food. Yes. We need to start eating the foods that are designed by Mother Nature mm -hmm. in order to repair bone properly. Yes. So okay. people, in order to rebuild their bone, need mm -hmm. to start making healthier choices. Yes. Uh, that means they need to shop a little bit more in their produce aisle. Yes. And, uh, and also making sure that they get quality protein. Okay. One of the important things to understand about bone development is that 35% of our bone is actually protein. Okay. It's called type 1 collagen protein fibers. Okay. They act like rebar in concrete. Mm -hmm. And then it's the minerals, with the primary one being calcium, that attach to those protein structures. Okay. That's what creates strength mm -hmm. and flexibility. And so it, it allows our bones to have the strength that they need to have. And as people age, Mm -hmm. They have a tendency to not either not eat enough protein okay. or not be able to digest their protein efficiently because they don't have enough hydrochloric acid production. Oh, okay. And they also start losing muscle mass as they age. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to make sure that they're getting the quality food ingredients that are going to help to build not only strong bone, but mm -hmm. strong muscle too. Okay. And protein, of course, you're talking meat and also meat, eggs. Meat, fish. Mm -hmm. Uh, eggs, mm -hmm. uh, chicken, yes. turkey, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, getting a variety of meat and uh, and making sure that you're getting enough because sometimes as people age, they have a tendency to not eat 
enough protein. Okay. And we want to make sure that they do get about 30, 35 percent of their diet is protein. Okay. And do you help them with this diet then? Do Absolutely. Do you assist them with maybe meal planning and such and go into detail or maybe even take them shopping? Uh, well, I don't take them shopping, no. Uh -huh. But, <laughs> but I, we do analyze their diet okay. and we do give them advice on their diet every uh -huh. time that they come in for the first month or so. Okay. We really take a look at that very closely yes. and making sure that they're basically the plate of food has the right proportion of fat, mm -hmm. protein, and carbohydrate, sure. and when we talk about carbohydrate, making sure that they have the right type of carbohydrate, mm -hmm. and begin to drive people more towards the vegetable uh, side of the aisle sure. rather than the grain side of the aisle. Mm -hmm. And to understand that even though it may not taste so good on the palate, but what the fuel you're putting in the body is going to help it heal itself as well. Absolutely, it's going to help heal itself. And after a while, if let's just say somebody doesn't like vegetables, you can certainly learn to like vegetables. Mm -hmm. I was a terrible eater as a young person growing oh. up. Okay. And it actually, uh, I eat almost nothing but vegetables and protein now, with very little grain involved. Yes, it's hard to make the transition over but then after about three, four weeks, you see the energy that your body has, and then you don't really want to go back to eating that junk food. That is so true. You know, but you have to be patient with yourself and be willing to do the three weeks. After all, you probably have been eating poorly for the last 15, 20 years, and mm -hmm. now you'll see how much better you feel. Absolutely, and that is where the inflammation is going to stop from. Food is our best medicine. Mm -hmm. We're hearing more and more about diabetics mm -hmm. because of the food choices that we're making. Right. And now you can go to the grocery store and get a roasted chicken already made for you, so that's even better than fast food. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, we want to talk a little bit about prevention, so we want to talk about exercise. And let's say that someone has come in, you have given the diagnosis or they've been diagnosed with osteoporosis, <coughs> mm -hmm. what type of exercise can they do to help themselves? Right, well, what's most important is to make sure that somebody with uh, osteoporosis does not have a balance disorder. Okay. So we look at brain function, cerebellar function, cortex function in order to make sure that that's not taking place. Most people who are in their 60s or 70s, even in their 50s and 40s, who have osteopenia or osteoporosis will already be developing these brain balance disorders. Okay. And so we, I do a very special neurological evaluation to identify how well the cerebellum is actually working. The cerebellum is a main computer terminal in the back side of our brain sure. that is responsible primarily for balance, mm -hmm. coordinated movement, and all of our postural muscles. Okay. So when the cerebellum begins to dysfunction, not only do we have uh, balance disorders and mm -hmm. coordinated movement disorders, but we start losing our posture too. Oh, yes. And you can actually see this as people age. Now there is no reason that somebody should be 70 years old and start having poor posture and osteoporosis. Oh. This can all be preventable and much of it can be reversed. Okay. So when we talk about exercise with our patients, first of all, it's important to do whatever you really enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Because yes. if you don't really enjoy doing it, you <laughs> might do it for a couple weeks or a month, but then you'll lose interest in mm -hmm. it. So we have different brain balancing techniques and games that we play at our clinic okay. to actually get people involved in their exercise pattern. Okay. We even do dumbbell and weightlifting programs and we've got a whole bunch of grandmas in there doing weightlifting. Oh wow. And they're very proud to tell their grandchildren and their children that grandma's weightlifting. Mm -hmm. And they actually at first they go, well, I don't I've never done this before. <laughs> yep. And then pretty soon they become very very proficient at it and it's mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And they at first they have a difficult time mm -hmm. coordinating the movements, sure. but in a very short period of time they actually get right on track and, oh. and it's just fun to watch the progress. Yes. And of course, while this is happening, we're also reducing the inflammation. Mm -hmm. We're getting them on the good diet. Yes. And so we're eliminating all the mechanisms that cause the inflammation, the gut, uh, leaky gut syndrome and the brain balance disorders. Yeah. Well, it amazes me that we're getting worse as a nation instead of better at such a younger age as well. Mm -hmm. And that's a concern that I think a lot of people have. 
Right. You know, and of course, learning this is such great information. And we want to actually talk a little bit about what knowledge you can throw out to my viewers as well okay. on this actual new science of finding out that osteoporosis is caused by inflammation. So, okay. Yeah, go ahead on that. Go. Uh, well, what I'd like to say is that bones, healthy bones, are meant to last a lifetime and that you can have strong, healthy bones at any age. You just need to find out what is the underlying cause of the inflammation. Find out the cause and then begin the repairing process. We'd love to be able to help you do that and uh, get you back on the road to health. Great, well, thank you so much for this wonderful information. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Tina. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. If you have any questions or would like to contact Hudson Spine and Wellness Institute, please contact them at www.hudsonbrainandbodybalance.com or give them a phone call at 715-808-0716. And please tune in to my other shows of Knowledge for Wellness being televised throughout the Twin City area or view my website at www.knowledgeforwellness.com. And you can find out about more detailed information in your area. And I hope we have provided you with more knowledge to benefit you and your loved ones. So until next time, be well and goodbye. Thanks again, Dr. Daryl Cooper. Thank you, Tina. I appreciate it. It's been great. Over time you've healed so much in me And I am living proof That although my darkest hour had come Your light could still shine through And at times it's just enough to cast The shadow on the wall Though I am grateful that you shine Your light on me at all Who am I then, That you would love me so gently you would recognize my name, Lord, who am I? That you would speak to me so softly, conversation with a love most high, who am I? Well, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found Was blind but now I see And the more I sing that sweet old song The more I understand That I do not comprehend this love